Snapseed is one of the best free mobile photo editing apps. You can use it to transform photos like this into photos like this, or something like this into something like this. Just a few edits make this photo much more vibrant. I've photographed and edited all of these pictures entirely with my mobile phone and Snapseed. One of the reasons Snapseed is great is because it's really easy to use, but nonetheless, beginners do need a bit of help, and when I started out, I couldn't find one complete tutorial on YouTube, so here's mine. We'll begin by going through all of the basic editing features one by one. Then we'll look at two of the more powerful editing features, the selective and brush tools. Finally, we'll go through and edit together, and I'll give you some general advice to improve your editing. There are timestamps in the description if you want to skip to a particular section. So let's begin. First of all, once you've installed Snapseed, you should go to Settings and set Format and Quality to JPEG 100% to make the final product as sharp as possible. Now let's open up our sample photo. If you're struggling to find it in the file directory, note the name of the file and search for it like I have. So let's explore our editing options by clicking on Tools. Now right away, if you want to cut off one of the edges in your photo, you can use the Crop tool. Tap the tick icon to save your changes. I'll just press the X to cancel for now. There's also Rotate. Maybe you want to straighten the horizon or your subject. You can rotate the photo just so. Two other options which are cool, but which I don't recommend for serious editing, are the Perspective and Expand tools. Perspective allows you to change, well, the perspective, like so. Expand will use AI to guess at what would be outside the frame of the photo. It's pretty cool, but it doesn't always do a perfect job. Another useful tool, which you can use to remove small objects from your image, is the Healing tool. If I wanted to remove this seagull from the image, I would go to Tools, Healing, Zoom In, and remove it from the image. You can also use the Healing tool to remove those weird little blue dots that you get when you point your camera at the sun, and if there are any aeroplane trails, for example, in the sky, you can remove those too. Don't try to remove objects that are too large or hold people from the image, or you'll leave a noticeable smudge behind. Once you've finished your cropping, rotating, and healing, if your photo needed any, we can proceed to make our adjustments. Let's start with the Tune Image tool. As always with Snapseed, scroll up and down to see the different options available to you. The first option is Brightness. Drag your finger to the right to increase the overall brightness of the image. Drag to the left to decrease it. Next up is contrast, which essentially accentuates the difference between the bright and dark areas of your photo. So you see if we increase contrast, the bright areas get brighter while the dark areas get darker, whereas if we decrease contrast, there's very little difference between the bright and dark areas. Here's a photo which really benefits from having a higher contrast, because it makes the brighter foreground subject stand out in comparison to the darker background. The third option is saturation. This makes the colours in your image more intense and vivid. Beginners tend to go overboard with this feature. Although a little bit more saturation is usually a good thing, keep those edits moderate. If you decrease saturation, it will remove the colour from your image until it's black and white. The next option is ambience. This one's a little hard to explain, but essentially it makes the foreground brighter and pop more in contrast to the background. You can see here with this photo that it looks pretty good, but don't push it too far. As you can see here with the clouds and the sky, it looks a bit dark and grainy. The next option is highlights. This affects the bright areas of your photo. Increase to make these bright areas even brighter, decrease to make them darker. The Shadows option does the same thing, but for the dark areas. Drag to the right to make those dark shadowed areas brighter, drag to the left to make them even darker. The final option is Warmth. Drag to the right to add a warm orange colour to your image, and drag to the left to add a cool blue colour to your image. It can look nice in moderation, and the temperature tool that we'll look at in a second is also an effective way to do this. Next up, we have the Details tool. This allows you to sharpen the small details in your image. Take, for example, this photo that I took at Alhambra. You can see how the patterns have been sharpened and accentuated. On other photos, however, you'll want to use this far more moderately. You can see here, for example, how it hasn't really done wonders for the sky. 
If you scroll down, there's another option called sharpening, but to be honest, it often doesn't look very good, and I'd recommend you just to stick with the structure slider. The next option is called white balance, which allows you to adjust the color of your image. It has two options, temperature and tint. If you drag the temperature bar to the right, you'll get a more orange image. If you drag it to the left, it'll become a more cool blue image. Scrolling down to tint, if you drag it to the right, it'll bring out the purple, the magenta tones in the image. If you drag it to the left, it'll bring out the greens. With this photo, for example, I can go to tint and just drag it slightly to the right to give the sky a nice pink hue. Now there's a bunch of tools like HDRscape, Glamour Glow, etc, which are essentially just preset filters. You can play around with them if you like, but hopefully by the end of this tutorial you'll be able to edit photos for yourself anyway. And to be honest, these preset filters can leave your photo looking a bit tacky. I've especially seen people abusing the HDRscape tool. Yikes. The Tonal Contrast tool can have some good results. Essentially, it accentuates the contrast between the high, medium, and low tones of your image, although sometimes it can end up looking a bit artificial. Play around with it and see if it works for the image that you're editing. There's a couple of other tools which you might want to use from time to time. If there's a person in your photo, you can use the portrait mode. This will allow you to use face spotlight, which brightens the subject's face while darkening everything around it. There's skin smoothing. Mmm, much better. And there's the eye clarity feature. Oh, Jesus Christ. There's also vignette to add bright or dark edges to your photo. Give it a go if you know what you're doing, but don't ruin your photo with it. Okay, now it's time for two of the more advanced editing techniques, which will really give you control over your photo. First, the brush tool. This allows you to paint edits onto specific areas of your photo with your finger. Let's take saturation. You can adjust the intensity here, so you could even desaturate with a negative number, and let's brush it on. Now to see where you're really applying your edits, click the eye icon to show you in red where it is that you're painting. Pinch to zoom in if you want to get really precise. Now the four options that you're given to brush on aren't the most useful, but if you want to brush on other kinds of edits like the ones we've just made onto specific areas of your photo only, there is a way to do that. First you make the edit as you normally would. Something I would want to do in a photo like this is increase the detail in the foreground but not in the background. Increasing detail in the sky often makes it look really grainy and ugly. So what I do is I use the details tool like this and apply it. Then I click this button here and it gives me some options. I can immediately undo an edit I've just made, redo something I've undone, or revert, which resets the image to how it was before any edits were applied. Now if I click on view edits, then I get a list here of every edit that I've made to the photo. When I click on one of them, I can delete that edit using the rubbish bin icon, a rubbish bin is British for a trash can, I can go back and alter the edit using the three lines icon, but what I'm going to do now is click on the paintbrush icon. Now I can paint that edit onto specific areas of the image, like so. Now I click the tick, and only those brushed areas of the image have received the edit. You can see the change here. I click to see before and after the edit. The brush tool is a fantastic way to edit only a specific part of your image. Another method, which is sometimes more effective, is to use the selective tool. With this tool, you can edit a specific area of the screen defined by its color. Let me show you what I mean. After you've clicked the selective tool, hold your finger on the screen and drag it around. You'll see the outer circle change in color to match what you're hovering over with the red dot. When you've found the specific color that you want, so let's say I'm trying to edit just the orange parts of the sky in this sunset, you release your finger. Now pinch with your fingers and drag in or out to increase or decrease the size of the area that you're going to edit. So let's say I want to edit this color throughout the whole sky, uh, so I'll just drag this as far as possible. Now pull your finger up and down to see the different options. You can adjust the brightness, contrast, saturation, and structure of the color area that you've selected. Here, if I bump up the contrast, these orange areas are contrasted with the areas around them, 
while if I increase saturation, only the orange is enhanced. Look for example at the blue areas which don't become more saturated. Play around with these settings to see how they affect specific areas of the image that you're editing. And I really recommend this tool for editing skies. A couple of things that I haven't talked about. There's the curves option, which allows you to change colors in your image in a more specific way. This takes a long time to explain, so I'm leaving it out of this tutorial. And to be honest, it's the sort of thing that's best done on your computer. And you can edit photos perfectly well without using it at all. There are Snapseed Curves tutorials elsewhere on YouTube that you can look up and I'll link a couple in the description. Likewise, if you want to create crazy effects using the double exposure tool, there are guides on YouTube, but here we're interested in editing our images rather than creating whole new ones. Once you've finished editing your photo, hit export and then save. Your photo will appear in your Snapseed folder. So let's edit our sample photo together. If I go to Tools, Tune Image, well, I could try adjusting the brightness. I don't think that needs to be adjusted. Contrast, I think that's fine as it is. If we go down to Saturation, a little bit of saturation looks good, but I don't want to push it too far, so I'll just keep that at 25 for now. If I go down to Ambience, I do quite like how that looks but I don't want to push it too far again, being mindful of those clouds. So I'm just going to leave that at around 10 for now. Down to highlights, you can see where the highlights are, right in the middle there especially. I don't want to push that either way, really. Shadows, mm, I do want to bring out the shadows a bit more. So I'm just going to push that up to about 25. Okay, next if we go to white balance, I could try increasing or decreasing the temperature for a warmer or cooler image. If I go warmer, I quite like the look of that. Mm, yeah. If I go down to tint, I could try and add a slight purple tinge to this sunset scene. Uh, don't want to push it too far, so I'll just, I'll just leave it there. There we go. Now if I hold down my finger on the screen, I can see the effects of the edits I've already done compared to the original image. So that's what it looked like originally, that's what it looks like now. So I'm pretty pleased with how it's going so far. We'll go back to tools. Now I want to add in my details. I don't want to add details to the sky, it never looks good. But if you look at the sand, some added details really looks great down there, so I'm gonna add in those details and then I'm going to brush them on. So if I grab the brush here, I'm not being precise about this. There we go. So overall I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go and start using the selective tool. Uh, the blue in the sky I think is a little bit weak and pale, so I'm going to go up there I'm going to drag it to encompass the whole sky, and I'm just going to bump up the saturation a bit, and maybe the contrast too. Yeah, I quite like that. Okay, so there we go. And then I might also increase the sun in the middle. I might make that a bit more powerful, and the little reflection that it's leaving on the sand in front of it. I can't quite see what I'm doing here, but I'll just increase the brightness a little bit, increase the contrast a little bit, increase the saturation a little bit. Okay, and I can see how that looks by going to view edits and clicking back one. So that's just kind of enhanced the sun there. So if we look overall at how it looks now compared to how it looked in the beginning, I think within a minute or two we've really boosted that photo. In terms of general advice, I would just say be moderate with your edits. Beginners tend to do way too many edits, crank up the saturation and the detail way too far. I did this myself. If you look at some of my early Instagram uploads, there are some horrible mistakes. Why did I think it was a good idea to blur everything around this goose? That is hideous. And that is worse. Be restrained. But more importantly, and this is my second point, Keep practicing and learn from your mistakes. Ditch the preset filters and try and create the look that you want. Another tip is to create multiple edits of the same photo. Once you've finished exporting an edited photo, adjust your edits to see different possibilities. Remember, you can open view edits and jump back in at any point in the editing process to change things.
So that concludes this tutorial. Do leave a like and a comment if you found it useful, and I will try and answer any questions you might have down in the comments. Uh, let me know if you want to see any more content on this channel about editing or taking mobile photos, or anything else for that matter. I'm a historian, might start uploading historical content soon. Subscribe, maybe. Oh, and my uh, Instagram ID is okelulus, link in the description, and that's where I upload some of my favourite pictures, so feel free to connect with me there. Good luck to you all, and happy editing.